What is up everyone? Welcome to another Nintendo Switch video. Today is the day that I took delivery of my Nintendo Switch LAN adapter, which is actually a little bit more exciting than it sounds. Now let me tell you guys a little bit of a story. When I got my Nintendo Switch, which I have right here, the glorious console that is the Nintendo Switch, um, when I received it, I wanted to get the LAN adapter pretty much straight away, so I pre-ordered the LAN adapter on Amazon. It was released, I think, it must have been released either yesterday or today or maybe Friday because I took delivery of it today and normally Amazon are pretty good at delivering pre-order items, especially if they're um, not a really popular item like this, you know, th these aren't exactly going to fly off the shelves. Um, so this has been released relatively recently, but I bought it for a little bit of a luxury because the Nintendo Switch obviously has built-in Wi-Fi and it is primarily, uh, well not primarily, but definitely 50-50 a handheld and home console. So when you're tethered with a LAN adapter, you are obviously slightly limited because if you then yank the switch out of the dock, you are then breaking that network link and the console will have to reconnect via Wi-Fi. So this isn't exactly an attractive accessory for everyone, but if you're like me and 95% of the time or even 98% of the time, you're going to be using the switch docked as a normal home console with the pro controller, um, which is pretty much using it like any other console, um, then this is a, a nice little purchase. So going back to my pre-order, I pre-ordered it just because I wanted it. Now the way I see it is everything that can possibly connect to Ethernet, it is a nice idea to connect it to Ethernet if you happen to have a network port nearby. Now down here I have my main wireless access point back here behind the TV which is an Apple Airport Extreme as you guys can see. Maybe I should take a look at it from the side. There you go. So there's my main access point which is in a far from a far less than ideal location for Wi-Fi signal but that's a discussion for another day. Um, so I've got plenty of the Ethernet ports available for my setup. The Apple TV takes up one, the 360 takes up another, and I'm going to stick the Switch on one as well. But something that I always wanted as well was the Wii U LAN adapter. Never got around to purchasing it, um, so I am going to be putting a small gigabit switch behind the setup and getting a Wii U LAN adapter as well and hooking that up via that. Um, but anyway, going back to this, sorry folks, I did not expect to be talking for this amount of time before opening the box. After I ordered this, I was playing my Switch, minding my own business, and then over the next couple of days I noticed something very interesting. Now, a lot of people have been getting hardware problems with it. Well, not a lot of people, but hardware problems are surfacing online. And um, they are a little more widespread than Nintendo would probably like, but it's no huge deal yet. It's not quite as crazy as, you know, Red Ring of Death on the Xbox 360 or whatever. You've basically just got a couple of dead pixels here and there, and also um, some people's Joy-Con are disconnecting and don't have a very secure Bluetooth connection and things like that. But I believe those issues issues uh, aren't that widespread at all but I've actually noticed an issue with my switch and it's not a hardware problem um, apparently according to Nintendo it is <laughs> the fault of the user which is Nintendo's response to a lot of things but um, apparently I have too too much Wi-Fi connectivity or wireless Wi-Fi signal around my Nintendo switch so I actually get Wi-Fi dropouts with this console. Now the dropouts are interesting. Basically when I use my Switch I have it docked and when I'm playing online or whatever, um, I've been playing Fast Remix online, that's pretty much the only online game I've been playing, it works fine but then if my Switch goes to sleep and I wake it up from sleep often the Wi-Fi will not reconnect or it does reconnect, it just has one bar of signal which is really strange. Now if I take the switch out of the dock and walk over here the Wi-Fi is completely fine. If I put it back in the dock over here then the Wi-Fi has terrible signal again and I think this has to do with the uh, access point being right next to the switch even though that should be a good thing but apparently there's too much Wi-Fi interference around there or something. So to cut a long story short I am getting Wi-Fi issues with this thing, so this was just a nice added extra and a bit of a bonus that I wanted because I like having things wired as opposed to using Wi-Fi um, because 
it frees up your wireless net network for all of those devices that can't use a wired connection. So if you get everything wired, then it's uh, it's a really nice thing. But um, looks like there's even more reason for me to unbox this adapter now. So let's dig into it and see what we've got. So it's actually quite nice packaging. It's Nintendo Switch red and white packaging with a nice bit of green on one side and a nice bit of blue on the other, or purple. It could be yellow and purple, I suppose, depending on... Uh, your perception of colour. But this is not made by Nintendo, I believe this is made by Hori and it's officially licensed because it does have the seal of quality on the side there. Let's see if we can get into this with one hand. So we've come at this from a slightly different angle. By the way folks, there you go, you can see the Hori logo there if it focuses and also the Nintendo seal of quality there. Very nice packaging just like all of the other Switch accessories that I've had which is basically the Pro Controller and the Switch itself, but packaging overall has been really nice. It's been a nice experience to unbox things for this console. So let's take a look in here. We have got, again, one-handed camera work. Apologies, folks. No tripod down here at the moment. Here we go. So it looks like we've got the LAN adapter itself, which is fairly large, come to think of it. Wow, that is pretty big. Here we go. There it is. Quite lightweight, but this is nice because it says Nintendo Switch on it. Um, you could probably find other USB LAN adapters that would work with this system just fine. Um, it's just a case of finding out what chipset is in here and then getting a similar USB to Ethernet adapter, um, which, as I say, would probably work completely fine. But it's nice to get the official one because you get the logo and then you've got guaranteed compatibility as well. Um, it is a bit on the pricey side. It's $26.99 at the moment, I think. But when I pre-ordered it, I believe it was $24.99. So um, I'll have to look back on my order. But yeah, this is a lot bigger than my um, everyday USB to LAN adapter. And when I mean my everyday USB to LAN adapter, I have a Retina MacBook Pro, which doesn't have a LAN port on it. So I've got a USB 3.0 to Ethernet adapter, which is about a third of the size of this, believe it or not. This is fairly large. I wasn't expecting anything this substantial at all. But there we go. That's pretty good. Um, obviously, when you connect this to the Switch dock, we'll take a look in a minute, but there is one internal USB port um, on the back of the Switch dock. When I say internal, I mean behind that cover. So that's obviously where it would be the best to connect this as opposed to dangling out the side. Plus, that's a USB 3.0 port. No idea if this is a U USB 3.0 accessory. Um, it's not blue, but you never know these days. So um, maybe it says somewhere. I don't know. I don't really care as long as it works, to be perfectly honest. And also, here we have a little bit of documentation. I'm going to put all this stuff back in the box and keep the box because that's just something that I do. So there we have it, folks, all boxed up and uh, ready to be put on the shelf just in case I ever want to sell it for whatever reason. Um, now, you guys will have to ignore the setup. My continuity in terms of my home entertainment setup series of videos is terrible at the moment. So um, you guys will just have to bear with me and uh, take the next part of the home entertainment um, setup video as its own sort of thing um, where we step back in time a little bit but that's okay so of course the area of focus at the moment is the nintendo switch dock now i do like the design of the dock but i have to say that it is fairly restricting back here with this cable routing mechanism let's see how it is with yet another thing dangling out the side this is also quite a stiff usb cable so i can't imagine this being extremely elegant coming out the side of the switch but i'm definitely not going to be able to plug it in with one hand I'm going to have to pause. So, of course, these are the only three ports back here. We've got the USB-C power, the USB-A type uh, 3.0 connector for the LAN adapter or whatever other accessory you want to plug in there, and um, the HDMI connector. Now, I've got no idea what other accessories would actually be useful for that port right now. Um, hard drives aren't supported by the dock, as far as I'm aware. In fact, I'm pretty certain they're not. Um, simply because the dock is not the console and then of course if you're streaming something off the hard drive and then all of a sudden you yank the, the switch out of the dock then that would break connection with the hard drive, it would interrupt it. Um, so I can't imagine them ever supporting USB hard drives with this port. I'd be very shocked if they somehow figured out a safe way to do that. Um, but then again the switch has micro SD internal com compatibility so um, 
a hard drive isn't really necessary, I guess. So maybe the LAN adapter is one of a very, very few accessories over the Switch's lifetime that will utilize this USB port. But even though there's not a lot for this USB port, I am so glad it's there because with every little feature like that that makes it a home console, um, it just makes me a little bit happier every time I see something like that because as you guys know, before the Switch was released and before it was demoed and stuff, I was I was very, very hungry for just a normal console experience and it's surprising how much more normal the Switch feels because it has some USB ports and things like that. Um, it, there was a real danger that we could have ended up with no USB ports with this thing, just the charging port. So of course, there it is closed up and there is the LAN adapter dangling out of the side. Now my dock has been sitting kind of here in front of the TV and it's cool because the cables can just kind of poke back down there. Now the LAN adapter isn't a huge kind of ugly problem at the moment. Um, let me just see if I can push some of these cables down and get it looking a little bit tidier. So the way that I have it set up, um, you can see the LAN adapter. If it was right at the back of the TV stand, then you wouldn't be able to see it. And to be perfectly honest, folks, even though I don't like the whole out of sight, out of mind thing, I am very tempted to put this dock on this side behind the TV right back there because it'll be out of the way of Eli and uh, it'll just... I don't know, it has, it's not really a looker sitting there. And I'm not a fan of this 360 controller charger sitting here either. I kind of liked it when it was just blank on the top here with just my center channel. By the way, check that out guys. That is a toddler handiwork right there. I'm gonna have to do something about that. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll see about the dock and where I'm gonna put it. And we'll see if I notice that big adapter coming out of the side. Oh man, an ethernet port would have been so nice on the dock. So, so nice. You know, the circuit board is so small in here, they could have easily fit the circuitry inside this LAN adapter inside the, inside the dock. But yeah, that's just asking for way too much. So of course now we need an ethernet cable and it's hilarious. It's actually being plugged in between there and there. I only need like a one and a half inch cable. Um, but the only cable I have to hand is a three meter one. Um, so this will have to do. And I'm gonna treat myself to some short patch cables for this home entertainment setup because as soon as I get a switch, the switch is gonna sit back there in the cable management section. And then it's gonna be a very short run to all devices that are gonna use ethernet. So the devices that will be using ethernet will be um, Wii U, Xbox 360, Apple TV, Nintendo Switch, possibly Blu-ray player, possibly receiver, because they all support Ethernet, which is funky, and they all have their uh, pros and cons. The Blu-ray player is very up to date. I've got something coming on this Blu-ray player in my home entertainment setup, but it's really good with um, uh, Netflix and things like that. But of course, I've got the Apple TV, but I'm kind of like in between what I'm gonna be doing with these devices, I really don't know what I'm gonna be using as my streaming device and stuff. The Apple TV hasn't really proven itself, especially um, as a UK person, but then again with AirPlay and stuff, it is extremely, extremely good. But I'm rambling. I'm gonna plug in this ethernet cable and we're gonna take a look. So let's do this in real time, just so we see what it's like um, to change a console from what was Wi-Fi to a wired network and see if it's just like an auto configuration thing um, or to see if there's anything complicated going on. As I say, I've been getting a couple of Wi-Fi dropouts, which is um, definitely been interesting. Now let's quickly get out of this game. Okay, so over to settings and let's take a little look at our network. So internet, we are gonna be, ah, Check that out, guys. It has done it automatically. So connection status, wired connection, and yeah, I haven't even touched anything. It's automatically disabled Wi-Fi by the looks of it because there's no little Wi-Fi logo in the corner. It's a sort of wired connection logo instead. So let's test the connection and see how it actually, how quickly it tests it. Connection test successful. Fantastic, folks. So that's as easy as it is. You plug it in and you're away to go. So let's just see if we can jump into uh, an online. Let's select this new vehicle that I've unlocked. I've been playing quite a bit of this game actually, folks. 
fast remix. It's um, it's not bad at all. There we go. We are connected. Awesome. So the LAN adapter is doing its job, folks, and I think that is pretty much everything that I can say about it. So I know this has been a very um, sort of unprofessional style of video, but there it is, the Nintendo Switch LAN adapter. I don't think there's much else I can really say about it. It seems to be working just fine. So as always, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this little video. This is a much shorter one than usual, but there's plenty more to come, especially the video about the home entertainment setup. Can't wait for you guys to see that. But anyway, folks, as always, I will see you in the next video.